Hey, so welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. Um, I'm going to be talking about switch level modeling in Verilog. And uh, switch level modeling is basically modeling the um, actual CMOS layout, so how the PMOS and NMOS transistors work together to form gates. And this is a picture of a NAND gate. I uh, based this off of one of my professors, actually. I go to Oregon Institute of Technology, or I used to go there. And this is my electronics professor, uh, Matteo Aboy. And uh, I'm going to link this video in the description below if you don't know what a NAND gate looks like in terms of CMOS, in terms of its PMOS and NMOS and how those connect and how it works. This is an awesome video. But uh, anyways, I'm going to show you in Verilog how you can simulate what this gate looks like. So I'm going to go to this PowerPoint really quick and show you. So this, again, is a NAND gate. We've got two PMOS transistors at the top, two NMOS transistors at the bottom, M1, M2, M3, M4, two inputs A and B. I'm going to take the output right there, in the out, and then for Verilog, I'm going to have a variable which is of the wire type, and I'm going to call that between, and that's in red. Additionally, uh, you need two voltage or power sources, so VDD and VSS. Normally VDD is your positive source, and VSS is your negative source. Alternatively, VSS can be replaced with ground. Um, I'm just going to call it VSS, though. So to start with the code, I'm going to go default net type none and this is going to I learned this off a hack and day blog gonna create it's gonna make it so Verilog doesn't just make up new net type variables for you and it can save you troubleshooting time. Uh, Xilinx tools don't seem to like this in terms of simulation so I would avoid it there but I use the lattice tools as well and it works just fine in those. So, create a new module, NAND gate. I'm going to have two inputs, and I'm really bad at typing and talking at the same time. A, input B, and then one output out to be consistent with the picture. Like I said, I'm going to have a wire, and that is this red between right here. And I don't have to specify the size because it's just a one bit uh, wire. I'm going to call this between. One of the things that's unique to Verilog, and this might be in VHDL also, I'm not sure. Um, but we have this supply one and supply zero. And I'm going to call supply one VDD and supply zero VSS, just like the picture. And so supply one, that's the high supply. Supply zero is the low supply. VDD is normally your high supply. VSS is normally your low supply, or you could call it ground, something like that. So good to go with all of those. And then Verilog also has access to these primitives. So if you type NMOS, and then the way that I like to think of it, and I'm not sure if this is right, but I like to think of the syntax as something like NMOS. And then I think it goes drain source and then whatever's at the gate. Let me check on that real quick. Because I made this up. I just want to get this right. Yeah, so, so modeling. Yeah, drain source gate. Okay. So NMOS, and first we're going to start with, let's go to the picture, we'll start with M3. So at M3's drain, we have out, and at its source, we have the wire between. So I'm going to write that in there. NMOS at the drain, we have out, and then we have between, and then since we need the gate, whatever's at the gate, Let's look at the picture again, and M3 is connected to A. Okay, so we will try A right here. 
then you can do a comma because we're going to have another NMOS that we're modeling. And let's look at that one. So this is going to be M M4. And at M4's drain, we have the wire between. At its source, we have VSS, which is our supply zero, our low supply. And then at its gate, we have B. OK, so we have between. Then we have VSS at its source, and then gate is B. Great. Semicolon. I'm going to delete this. Actually, I'll keep it up there. And actually, I can put CMOS here because this is going to work for the PMOS primitive as well. So we're going to go PMOS. And let's go to the PMOS. So M1. And so. With PMOS, the, with M3, the top side right here, that's the drain. The bottom side is the source because it's the NMOS. PMOS, this is inverted, so drain's going to be down here. Source is going to be right here. So M1, the drain is connected to out. The source is connected to our high supply VDD, and the gate is connected to A. Drain is connected to out. Source is connected to VDD. Gate is connected to A. Comma, again, and we're going to do another PMOS. Look at it again. This is identical in terms of drains and source, except for the gate is B. So we're going to say out VDD B. OK. And then end module great and i'm just going to write a simple test bench actually i'm just going to copy and paste it and i'll go over it in one second because i already wrote it boom okay so i put a and b are registers the output is a wire okay and then an EDA playground, which is what I'm using, you have to include this in this order. And you have to include this dump VCD file. And uh, so what this is going to do is going to say initial, this is the initial block. I'm going to have input low, input A is low, input B is high. And then after another cycle, I'm just going to change the variables until it finishes. And since this, there's a NAND gate, we're going to expect at this cycle it should be high the output should be high at this cycle the output should be high as well and then in an and gate when both inputs are high the output will be high since this is a nand gate since it's a nand gate or inverting and gate this should be low okay and select tools and simulators i'm going to go with icarus verilog 0.9.7 you can click this little open ep wave after run and i'm going to run it hopefully i didn't get any errors yeah so let's see what we got we have just what we expected and this is our out bar right here and yeah out is high after one cycle well if i can get it over here yep out is still high after the next cycle. And then once A and B are both high, then out is low because it's a NAND gate. One interesting thing to note is this little orange line right here in the between wire. That is That actually means high impedance or Z because the variable can have four can be four things in the Verilog. It could be a one, it can be a zero, it can be a Z, which is high impedance, or it can be X, which is don't care. This orange means high impedance, and let's look at the picture and see why that makes sense. So it's high impedance when B is low and A is high. So when A is high, M1 is off, and M3 is on, okay. But when B, but since B is low at the same time, M2 is on. So there's a path from VDD to out. 
and uh, M4 is off. So the path between, which is the wire, between that and VSS, which is our low supply, that's essentially an open circuit, and that is a infinite impedance. So that's why it gives us that Z, which is the high impedance um, variable type in Verilog. So yeah, you can see right there, it changes to Z. Okay, so I hope this helped you out. I just thought this was really cool. Um, I had found it the other day. I will link this EDA Playground. It's going to be called Switch Level Modeling. Um, I'll link it in the video description. And if you enjoyed this, leave a like, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.